Welcome back everybody, you're watching The Killish Country Life and my name's Andrew. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing the same clothes for the third video in a row, it's because all three videos were shot on the same day. How about that? So I just got done installing doors. I've got a couple hours left this afternoon to do some work. Guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna clean up this nasty, disgusting loft, get all this HVAC stuff out of here, and we are going to double the thickness of the floor. Back whenever I had an engineer look at if we could put a live load up here, not just a dead load, as in some sort of living space, he told me I could, but he said the floor had to be three quarters of an inch thick. Well, we had already had half inch OSB down at the time, so I asked him, could I double it up to one inch? He said, absolutely. So I have talked with the drywall company. Next week is Thanksgiving week. That's the week they plan on starting, but I've already been forewarned that he's expecting call-ins and people to not show up because it's a short holiday week. But regardless, I have to be prepared and ready that they could start coming to work, which is in just a couple of days. And I have to have this flooring down set, ready to go. So whenever they run sheetrock in here, it's run to the proper level. I guess we could run sheetrock first, then I could double the thickness of the flooring outside of the sheetrock. That's not really the proper way to do it. So I wanna go ahead and get the flooring down today. Now we're gonna try something new today. I have been extremely curious about that new foam gun that I have. I bought a can of Great Stuff Pro flooring adhesive. It's made just for subflooring. So we're gonna try that out in the foam gun. Instead of sitting here squeezing out liquid nails all day long, we're just gonna run along with the foam gun, screw this stuff down to it. Supposedly it works well. I've been cautious about it, but all the reviews I've read and people I've talked to seem to really enjoy it. So that should make this process a whole lot easier. So with that said, let's get this cleaned out and let's double up the thickness of this floor. What I'm doing is going through and marking every single floor joist which I have with either uh, seams or chalk lines that y'all probably can't even see. So once I put my new subfloor down, I won't be able to see these lines anymore, but I'll have reference lines right here to where I can pull the chalk line to snap and know how to attach the new floor all the way down to the floor joist. All right, so y'all know I have been a big fan of this Great Stuff Pro foam gun. I've been using it to foam around all the doors, windows, gaps in the wall, everything to really seal this house up. And I've been curious about a product that they have been promoting. This is the Great Stuff Pro foam floor and wall adhesive. And it makes some pretty bold claims. So I picked me up a can of this the other day. It's not cheap, it's a little over $20, but if it meets the claim that it says, it's $20 well spent. And by that, I mean it says it'll do drywall paneling, subfloors, foam panels, it lists all kinds of stuff. It's made specifically for subfloor adhesive. And this claims that this one can will replace up to 16 tubes, 32 ounce tubes, not the 10 ounce tubes, of traditional subfloor adhesive, like say Liquid Nails and some other brands. So this can should, I shouldn't even put a dent in it doing this few hundred square feet of floor up here, although I'm really gonna lay this stuff down thick because I don't really need this anywhere else. And eventually these cans do go bad. So if you look at it that way, I pay $2.50 for say a 10 ounce tube, not 32 ounce like they're claiming of, uh, oh goodness, Liquid Nail subfloor adhesive. This is saying it can replace 16 of the large tubes. So if that's the case, then this is a bargain at $20 and a fraction of the cost of all the subfloor adhesive. Now the problem is I have no way to test this. I've just went by reviews. A lot of people said this has really good strength, holds really well. I'm gonna lay down a nice thick foam bead, 
but it's going to be so nice to just squeeze a trigger instead of having to pump out, pump out. I wish I had known about this stuff a while back when I first started building this house. I'd have been a lot more likely to use this on some other stuff. And if y'all watched my storm shelter build, I lost count of how many tubes of construction adhesive I went through making that. This would have been a lifesaver. Oh, I wish I had known about it. All right, so something else that I want to do differently with this floor. Keep in mind, I'm walking on half inch floor on floor joists, two by eight yellow pines that are 12 inch on center. So it's already a very stout floor just because 12 inch on center floor joists. But we're going to double it up per what the uh, engineer said to make sure we have a nice, very sturdy and safe floor up here for storing things in our attic that will eventually be a loft. Hope y'all get that. <clears throat> so one thing I want to do, you can see all my four by eight sheets are running this direction. We discussed this a while back because my floor joists are running this direction. Oriented strand board, OSB has a strength one direction where it lays all the fibers in the long way and it happens to be the length of the board, the eight foot length. So you always want to cross those. If I got floor joists going this way, you want to lay your oriented strand board strands the opposite direction to make a very strong floor. And I have done that. But now that I'm gonna lay another four by eight sheet down, I'm thinking I'm gonna go the exact opposite direction again. So the boards that are underneath have strength this way, the boards on top going this way are gonna have strength. Everything's glued together. It should make an unbelievably strong and hopefully flex free floor so we don't ever hear any issues, creaks or anything downstairs. Although keep in mind, what this room is intended to eventually be is an office. I don't plan on being up here very often, all hours of the night. It's not like this is a bedroom or something to where we're expecting a tremendous amount of walking and we're downstairs trying to sleep. Somebody's up here creaking the floor, banging around. That's just not gonna be the case with this room. Huh, definitely does not restart easy next day like it claims. Feels almost empty too.
All right, so now I'm gonna take my chalk line and transfer all the marks that I made on those bottom studs where every floor joist is, transfer that line to this OSB snap and mark it. Now I know where to come back and nail through both sheets all the way down into the floor joist. This should make an unbelievably strong and hopefully squeak-free floor. It's glued, screwed, and now I'll nail it. All right, well, the floor is done. It is unbelievably solid. Makes a huge difference doubling this up, walking around now. There's zero flex. I don't hear any creaks. So thoughts. One, I can say I'm very disappointed in the OSB that was delivered to me. It is different thicknesses, looks weathered, looks horrible. It was deep in a stack whenever I got some uh, hardy stuff delivered a while back and I didn't see how bad it was or I would have denied it. So not very happy about that. I've got a couple of transitions where two pieces of meat that is so far off, I'm gonna come up here with a belt sander or something and work that before I put my flooring down. So that's very aggravating I have that extra work to do. But it is what it is. As far as the Great Stuff Pro floor adhesive, eh, I don't think I'm overly impressed. It was hard to get back started today and I closed the gun up and did everything the way they said. And it clearly says on the can, you can restart this after 30 days. But I barely wanted to come out today. Here's the other thing it feels practically empty. And I didn't get nowhere near the 16 tubes of 32 ounce tubes of construction adhesive that this supposedly replaces. There is no way on earth. 32 ounce tubes, that's the gigantic one. That ain't the 10 ounce ones like you and I are used to using in a small caulk gun. It says it replaced 16 of them. There's no way I put that much bead down up here. Now I'll put it down in zigzag nice and thick with this stuff because I don't know how well it holds but it's just about out $20 to do this small of an area. I don't think this is a bargain. I'm probably going to stick with construction adhesive in the future, like liquid nails. Although I will say this was much easier to put down, no doubt about that, but I don't think it replaces construction adhesive, at least for me. If it was say $10 a can, I'd be more likely to use it in the future. We'll see. Okay, so I know this was a nice short episode here, but finishing the loft is something I did want to show off. Now we got the floor doubled up. We have sheet rockers that'll be here before long. So this needed to be done, needed to be cleaned out. It looks like I still have plenty of wood for them to screw to. I know that was a concern from some people, but uh, that doesn't appear to be the case at all. I'm still not making my mind if I'm gonna trim out underneath the door with OSB. I've still got to get a door, cut it down, figure out what I want to do. I was gonna put a rubber seal there and really seal out the attic from the rest of the house, but now that the attic's gonna be air conditioned, I don't know if there's if it matters at all, if there's a gap down there or what I decided to do to clear that space up because, well, the air back there, the air in here is all gonna be the same exact filtered air. So I don't think it'll make any difference how I do a door up here at all. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Things are about to heat up. Trust me, I'll tell y'all all about it on the next episode. Thanks for watching.